week and we're back. Got an empty trailer. The guys just got done dumping this bad boy out. You can see right here, this is how they take up the dirt with the wheelbarrow. They got their truck right here and I right here. This is a nice neighborhood. They got some sidewalks off of the road so we're not messing up the grass and all that stuff. So you can see here, they bring around here. Let's go walk up here, see how it's looking on the sock cut section. All right, so you can see this is kind of our storage area at the moment. We got all of our rebar, wood, vapor barrier, all this good stuff. You can hear them down there. You can see all this. So it looks pretty much the same as last week. Just some more material scattered about since we're starting to expand, get into some other processes like footers and forms and all that. Now I'm gonna take you down there and we're gonna see what's going on in the basement. All right, so you can see here, some more progress over here. A lot of progress over here. They dug down a good two more feet. You remember that this wasn't as deep last time that we were in here. You can see all that. They just got done pouring a footer right here. So this is the first time you've seen this in person, real time. Over here, he's shoveling that over there, getting a little smooth. So, I don't know if you've seen our previous videos, but we pour the footer slab first, and then once that's cured, we'll prop up the walls and the forms, and we'll pour the walls. So this is cool to see this in real time. Let's see a better angle of this. Perfect, you can see they already got this one right here. So this is what I was talking about last week's video about making sure that their foundation is stable so you can see that this dirt is kicked out this way and this previous footer is laying on this resting on this so when these are cured now these are going to be holding up the structure so therefore when these are nice and cured and hardened we're going to come in get rid of these and the structure should remain stable versus if we were to just tear this all out everything would cave in so there's an order to doing it very important Make our way over here. How's it going over here, JC? It's going. Looking good so far. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a inspector tomorrow. Nice. So you can see here, he's digging out that back there. It's going to be a footer hole. Looking good. Got a form right there next to him. Oh, here's another angle of this. See the vapor barrier back there? Perfect. All right. So jumping into the time lapse here, pretty just standard week. The guys were doing a lot of digging, getting that floor down as well as all the footer work. I will be highlighting the takeaways from this week's video. So we're about to find out. We're about to learn something. See if I can teach you anything about dig outs. This will be fun. Let's get into it. So right away, you can see here, they're just demoing that center wall right there, getting rid of, getting it out of their way, opening up some more room. Because like I've said in previous videos, the key to these basement digouts is just having enough room so you can move guys around, move equipment around if you do have equipment, as well as like, we use a lot of wheelbarrows as you can see here. So being able to have paths and stuff for these things to move around, it just increases the efficiency in which these guys are able to do this. So the faster, you can get room made or like a central hub for your activity, the better. And then once you really start, so like this is the part of the process when stuff really starts to pick up just because there's so much room that you can fit more and more guys down there. So we run a crew of at least 25, 30 guys. So when we have basement digouts like this and we can afford to put more guys on a job when we have jobs getting finished and all that stuff, we can have like six, seven guys on this job and then that really starts to pick up the pace as well. And then on some of these jobs as well, it's kind of nice. Like you might see, I think an electrician or a plumber came by this week or last week, I can't really remember, but it's nice when we work fast because then that way we can get, there's just room, right? So when electricians or plumbers do come in, they're not in our way, we're not in their way. They can do whatever they need to do in terms of inspecting stuff, cutting some wires, whatever it may be, fixing pipe. So first order of operation is always just getting plenty of space done. So you can see here, they're digging this floor down another three, two feet, I wanna say. And then this makes probably the biggest difference in these basement digouts is when they're able to go to a nine foot ceiling 
It's just, it's night and day. Cause this job, when I walk down there, the fact that my head almost touches the ceiling is super claustrophobic. It almost doesn't feel livable. That's definitely a first world problem, but it's just, it's very cramped and it's not comfortable. So when you add in these extra four, in some cases like five feet, honestly, when we go from like a tiny cross space slash basement, the amount of room that you're able to gain from that is just, it's, it's worth every penny, honestly. Cause we do get a lot of pricing questions on our videos like how much does this cost so and so square footage and that's really just a hard thing to give because there's so many variables that go into these basement digouts that you really have to go out there and inspect the property before you can give an accurate estimation of a cost so on these though we will tell you in most cases from what we see in these houses it is worth worth the money to go down and dig a basement out like this to gain more room especially if you don't want to move because some of these locations too you have to keep in mind they're in really good locations in downtown denver right like they're central locations nice neighborhoods stuff like that so really these people don't want to move because they have everything they could ever ask for in this neighborhood as is so this is the only way and of course we get the question as well like why don't they go up and honestly in these markets these days like denver included it's pretty much the same price to go up or down and the nice thing about a basement dig out is the family or residents can still live and go about their daily lives in this house. But if you do like, a, if you jack the house up, if you do like a second story, you got to go on vacation for like six months. So doing this is just the most cost effective, least intrusive way of adding space to a home and is what we recommend to everyone. So hopefully that was a little bit insightful as to why you'd want to do these as well as the benefits. Cause we, we plan on doing a video down the line, just discussing all the positives of a basement digout that you might not realize. And those were some good points included. Like the fact that you can stay in your house while there's work being done. Keep in mind it is noisy. Yeah, there's an active work zone under your house, but the fact that you don't have to move anywhere for six months is, it's a win. All right, back on topic here. You can see the guys are building the forms right there. And with these tight basement digouts, they have to build them on site. It would be nice to have them pre-made, but it's just easy with some wood, two by four, some plywood, just to build them on site and then get them built. Cause they're a pretty common shape. You can see here, the guys are building one right in front of the camera. We have a, full, a hole near the top, a little access chute for the quick creek to get poured into. Easy as that. We have some wood to prop it up against the wall. So it's nice and flush. And then that's said and done. So a really simple process in terms of the form work that goes into these. I would say that these are probably the easiest forms you'll ever do. Cause the footer slab itself, you just pour, right? You don't need a footer, for, I mean, uh, not a footer. You don't need a form for that kind of stuff. You just pour it. And then for the wall, you can see here, it's just a piece of plywood some, with some reinforcement and access chute, and then some plywood to prop it up. So it's nice and vertical. And that's really about it in terms of form work. So basement digouts, they may look hard, but in the grand scheme of things, they're honestly not too bad. It's definitely a manpower kind of deal and definitely a professional kind of deal. Cause I will tell you if you were to do this by yourself, it's definitely doable, but there's a lot of like little things that come into play that you may not be aware of that when you have a crew that does this all the time, they kind of get the, they get the catch of it. And then it just, it's so seamless and streamlined that it makes a difference. So you can see here, they're able to break more of that wall down right there. And last week we talked about them putting up that reinforcing structure right there. You can see those two by fours holding up the roof. That's another crucial part of these basement digouts is just making sure that you maintain that structural integrity throughout the entire digout. Just because like I said, anything falling on your head, anything like that, it's a liability. You don't want anyone hurt. That's never fun on the job site, right? You're there to get a paycheck. You're there to work out in most cases, like our guys do. These guys are working out. Let me tell you, these are some of the toughest guys we know and you don't wanna go home hurt. So safety is very important. You just gotta plan ahead, make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you inspect the house as well, you know? Cause like that brick wall there was definitely a crucial structural element to this home. So it was very vital that we had to replace it with some form of temporary structure in order to maintain that strength. Switching back here, you can see just how many forms they got up right here. They got three or four in this corner right there. There might be one directly under the camera that I can't see, but even with this, you can see how much room they got. That's cured, you can see that, they just ripped it off. And then they'll reuse these for the other ones as well.
And then this is what I was talking about what, as well with the access area and having room. You can see just how much wood we bring down there for all the form work. And if you don't have this room, you gotta keep it outside. And then every time you need something built or something brought in, you have to have someone on the outside or you have to go outside and grab it. And that just adds so much time onto the logistics of things that it's really worth just getting a nice big open room done right away. So you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Cause you can see like, even though there's a lot of room down there right now, you have concrete bags everywhere, wood, you have some rubble in the corner right there. Cause this whole section that you can see the guys are in right now where the concrete bags are in, that section is like totally filled with rebar, vapor barrier. You can't see it from the camera angle, but that thing is like unwalkable back there. And the fact that it's out of their way and they're able to like work back there, super crucial. You can see the guys here mixing the concrete in that bag right there. With that said though, I think that's gonna bring us to the end of this video right here. There's not much more to talk about. I pretty much went over everything that they did this week. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you enjoyed this in-depth voiceover. I'm definitely getting the hang of this more. It's something that takes some practice. You know, it's weird talking to yourself in a room by yourself doing voiceovers, but I'm getting the hang of it. Let me know if you enjoyed this voiceover and what else you wanna see from us down the line. With that said, I'll see you guys soon. Later.